Hey guys, Josh Lucas and Aaron Schober coming at you from Sword Carolina. This week we're going to be covering the Dirk Vexel and the Zuckin. Two very similar techniques uh, kind of get put together in the manuals and, and we're going to work with them here because you would use them both in a similar type of situation. Just one little thing is going to change which when you would do which. So uh, we'll tackle the Dirk Vexel first and it's actually going to be a little different than we normally have done our Dirk Vexel and we'll go into that uh, here in a sec. <clears throat> so basically what we're setting up is a situation to where uh, maybe I've attacked Aaron and he's defended strongly against my attack. Uh, he's out to the side. He's not threatening me. So because he's not threatening me, I can leave this bind and, and not be killed immediately. Um, so you can see I'm kind of pushed over to the side here. Aaron is not threatening me. If I were to do a Dirk Vexel, what I would actually do is dip my point down, raise my pommel up to where I clear Aaron's sword and then come in on the other side of his sword with a thrust. Okay, real simple. That, that, that's the simplicity of it is to where I've been displaced off to the side, dip the tip and come in on the other side. Okay, a uh, couple of things that you want to do with this is A, it requires a good amount of range to do it. So if we, if I attack and we're here, Aaron and I are too close for me to do a Dirk Vexel in this situation. Okay, so it does require some range. You could set that, or maybe the other person will set that if they take a step backwards when they're displacing. Uh, but it does require some range. Second thing is you're gonna wanna move your hands first before moving your feet. So if I come in, try and do a Dirk Vexel, but I'm already stepping in, once again, I've closed too much range I'm in a bad position now, okay? So in both those situations, I've kept my distance, moved my hands first, and made that movement really as quick as possible. You also wanna make it as tight as possible. Um, so if I'm displaced, I don't wanna come down and come all the way over here, leaving myself exposed. I, I wanna make this a real tight type of motion, dipping below the blade. Uh, the other thing is I want to keep my sword in between me and Aaron's sword, as always, you know, that, that simple principle of defending yourself. And really the best way to do that is when you thrust, don't thrust in a straight line. You'll want to step off line. Okay. Now, I said that we changed it, not really changed it up, but everybody's, you know, growing and adapting and finding better ways to do this. You know, we used to do the Dirk Vexel a little different to where we did it more as a wine. So we're here. We would actually dip under, we would change sides, we would whine uh, and do the thrust. But really what that does is leaves me really open to a counterattack and, and makes it to where, let's say he displaces that thrust. It's gonna be hard for me to go back to the other side now. Uh, so, and, and that is something with the Dirk Vex, so you can do it multiple times. So we've actually changed it to where we're staying more neutral in the bind. We're not committing to one side or the other uh, until we really see the good opportunity to get the thrust in there. Uh, pack, I can Dirk Vexel. If he displaces that, still at range, I can just Dirk Vexel again, Dirk Vexel again until I finally see the moment to attack. That's when I'll commit to the thrust and I'll step off line, protect myself while I'm doing it. So moving on to the next technique called the Zuckin, it's gonna be a similar motion with a Dirk Vexel where I went under the sword. The Zuckin is gonna be basically the same setup of air is not threatening me, I'm off to the side. He's applying pressure to the side, okay? Uh, instead of going under the sword like I did with the Dirk Vexel, the Zuckin I'm actually gonna go on top of the sword. I'm gonna accomplish that by pivoting. I'm gonna push my pommel forward, brings my blade back step and then cut in. Uh, there are three targets that you can actually do with a Zuckin. Well, there's multiple targets, but three good targets you can do when doing a Zuckin. The best one is the hands because I get immediate control of his sword. Uh, the next one would be kind of his right shoulder. And if I do that, I wanna keep my hands low and control at the same time. And, and the other one would be pull back. I could actually cut to Aaron's right side but in all three, all three situations, I wanna make sure I'm defending myself at all times. So once again, the basic movement, I'm displaced, I'm Aaron's with force, push it off to the side, I'm yielding to that force, 
sliding up and then cutting down. Okay, so you want to make it as quick and as tight a movement as possible. So you don't want to pull all the way back to a Vomtog and then try and come down. Really you want to try and accomplish it right from the bind. And the last thing about the Zuckin is you'll do it at a little bit closer range than a Dirk Vexel. Uh, so a Dirk Vexel I'm trying to thrust, I'll need to stay at a further range to really dip underneath the point. Zuckin, you could actually be pretty close and still come back, it's just gonna be a larger movement. Uh, but the distances can be greater. So if I cut at Aaron and Aaron stepped in while setting me aside, this would be a great time to do a Zuckin at that closer range. So one of the last tips with the Dirk Vexel and the Zuckin is that it's such a fast and such a quick movement, uh, you can actually use it somewhat as a feint. And you can do this really if the person is cutting at your sword. Uh, so they're not cutting at you, you know, to this upper left opening. They're, they're actually cutting to the sword. They're, they're trying to displace it. And it's something with a little practice and, and a little training you should be able to pick up on and be able to see, you know, in the moment in death. So, once again, we're getting, it's a little bit more advanced technique, but something that you know, you'll want to, to, to train and um, develop that skill. So if I'm trying to do the Dirk Vexel range is very important. I wanna make sure I lead with my hands. So I'm cutting at Aaron. Uh, he moves to the sword. I just do the little dip. You know, I, I don't even have to let contact happen. I could see him cutting to the sword, just dip down and immediately move into the Dirk Vexel. Uh, same thing with the Zuckin. I'm attacking leading with my hands. I don't have to wait for him to hit the sword, push it off to the side. If I see he's going for the sword, I can just immediately do the twitch, uh, which is what uh, Zuckin means, uh, the twitching. So I can do the twitch and, and get the attack in on the other side of the sword. All right, guys, well, that is the Dirk Vexel and the Zuckin, two similar techniques used in kind of similar situations, but a little different in the implementation. Try it at home, work out uh, what works for you guys, and uh, let us know in the comments as always. We'll see you next week, Sword Carolina. <laughs> On swords, we do sword stuff <laughs> weekly. weekly.